Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Spivey, joined with my dad, Travis Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our science tutorial videos. And today's video, we will cover chemical energy in the ATP ADP cycle. So, so let's, let's do this. this. Our learning circle for today is, I can explain how ATP is used to help the body maintain dynamic homeostasis. Let's start off with a brief introduction of chemical energy. As we all know, the sun is the ultimate source of life on earth. Plants and trees take in this sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water to produce glucose and oxygen. Now the oxygen that is produced is just a waste product to the plant and is used by us during cellular respiration, but we'll cover that a little later. The glucose that is produced by the plant is a carbohydrate, which has chemical energy stored in its chemical bonds. Living things get their energy by eating the plants and trees. When they eat the plants and trees, the chemical bonds of the carbohydrates are broken, which releases the chemical energy for the organisms to use. So why is this so important? This is important because all cells need energy and matter to carry out their life processes. Think about it. Our cells need energy to make new molecules such as enzymes and other proteins. Our cells need to be able to bring materials inside of the cell and move all the materials out of the cell. Our cells also need energy and matter to build and repair organelles and cell membranes. Also consider this. What would happen if nerve cells didn't get the energy they need to send signal impulses to many different muscles in our body? Take a second. Think about it. Great. I'm glad you got the answer. Now let's talk about ATP, but before we do, let's give a little history on how ATP is produced by the powerhouse of our cell, the mitochondria. Our mitochondria takes in nutrients, then breaks them down to create the energy-rich molecules for the cell, which are ATP. In ATP, the energy we need is stored in the form of chemical bonds. So the next questions are, what is the chemical and structural makeup of ATP, and how do we get the energy we need to survive from this molecule? ATP, which stands for adenosine triphosphate, is a nucleotide which is chemically made up of a nitrogenous base, a sugar molecule, and a phosphate group. Let's go back to the name adenosine triphosphate. Tri stands for the number three, so that lets us know that ATP contains three phosphate groups on its tail. That's why we call it adenosine triphosphate. A for adenosine, T for tri, and P for phosphate. The energy in adenosine triphosphate is stored between its second and third phosphate groups. So how do we release the stored energy from ATP so our cells can survive? That's an excellent question. First, when our cells need energy, the bond between the second and third phosphate groups of ATP are broken by the process of hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is basically a chemical reaction in which a water molecule is used to split another molecule. In this case, hydrolysis is used to split the chemical bond between the second and third phosphate groups of ATP, which releases the chemical energy in the bonds. Think of ATP as a fully charged battery. Second, now that a phosphate is removed, ATP now turns into ADP, which stands for adenosine diphosphate. Di stands for the number two, so that lets us know that we only have two phosphates on the molecule now, which is why we call it ADP or adenosine diphosphate. Think about ADP as a partially charged battery that needs charging. Third, a phosphate group is added back to ADP, now making it ATP during this process of phosphorylation. This constant cycle of releasing a phosphate and then adding a phosphate is called the ATP-ADP cycle. Energy is constantly being stored and released to support the many needs of cells in this cycle, which occurs in the mitochondria. In summary, the ATP-ADP cycle is like the charge on your phone. When your phone has a full charge, it's like ATP. It is full of chemical energy. When you use your phone, the battery gets low and it's like ADP because it has been releasing heat and chemical energy throughout the day. So now you have to plug your phone up to fully charge from ADP back up to ATP. Remember, ADP when the chemical bond between the second and third phosphate group has been broken and energy has been released. ATP when a phosphate group has been added and energy has been restored. So basically, ATP helps the body maintain dynamic homeostasis by providing cells the energy they need to perform the many tasks they complete throughout the day. Without ATP, our cells would lack the energy they need to work, which means they would break down and die. Thanks ATP for all of the energy you give our cells to complete their daily functions. We salute you. And that's our video for today. Now I'm searching on to see how proficient you are with explaining how ATP is used to help our bodies maintain dynamic homeostasis. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the bottom right of the screen, or you can click the link in the description box below the video. 
Remember, 80% are hired for proficiency, record your associate your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you better keep going because, because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our awesome videos. Peace and have a positive, productive day. Really?